Hey everyone, and welcome back. It's great to see you. Today, we're going to talk about Beyond Good and Evil. Developed by Ubisoft, and I think uh, sometime about 2003 is when the game came out. Um, Beyond Good and Evil is an interesting game. I had actually waited a long, long time to play this, though I'd had it in my collection because I uh, was very much anticipating Beyond Good and Evil 2 when they originally showed that at E3 so many years ago now. And so I thought, okay, we'll have the game. Um, it seems like the sequel is going to come out, so closer to when the sequel gets released, then I'll play this game so I can, one, catch up to where the story is going to be, but then two, you know, of course experience the game for the first time. And I think, you know, more recently I had come to the... Um, expectation that we'll probably never get that title. Um, it seems like Ubisoft's moves on to um, other games, you know, primarily another Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> and um, they've probably been pretty busy with this new Star Wars license that they're working on. But, you know, so to say, I decided I would, I would play Beyond Good and Evil, and that's kind of where this story starts. So, um, you know, pretty standard kind of box here. And I got a nice complete copy, and as you can see, the image is quite repeated on this, which is not outside the norm, right? It's pretty standard. Um, and we get a nice little booklet here with Prince of Persia advertised on the back. Again, by Ubisoft, where's Prince of Persia? Um, and, you know, we get some basics in here. It talks a little bit about who Jade is and how to control Jade and some of the little details of the world and so on. Um, but this game uh, was originally the idea of and developed by Michael Ansel. And Michael um, uh, works at Ubisoft or worked at Ubisoft. I'm not too sure where, if he's there right now currently. Um, but he developed the Rayman series. And he wanted to make something a little more serious, a little more meaningful in tone and kind of open a world up to players to explore and and run around in. And that's where Beyond Good and Evil started. And the game was originally developed by an in-house studio of like 30 people. For about three years they worked on the title. And they showed it off at E3. And there was a lot of controversy um, the first time it was released, or re revealed, excuse me, with a lot of people um, not really particularly interested in the, in the way the game was going. So uh, Ubisoft went back and they kind of reworked some things about the game. And when it released, it was a critical darling. Like people loved the game, um, and critics had some issues with you know technical issues or you know some combat issues. But overall, said the story's fantastic, the gameplay's phenomenal, uh, the game's beautiful, and so on. But unfortunately for Ubisoft, the game did not pay out um, as as much as the critics would have you believe it would. Um, it didn't sell particularly well according to Ubisoft and I think that's why even though a, a lot of people put Beyond Good and Evil on these you know greatest games of all time lists, um, it hasn't uh, created a, a sequel. <laughs> I think there's been fear on whether the game would be successful. I don't know, that's just a guess. But anyways, that's a little history of the game. And so diving in, what is the game about? Well, you play as Jade. And Jade um, is like a, a reporter, hit woman, um, uh, mercenary, I don't know what you'd call her. But she basically um, lives in a lighthouse with some kids that I think she's uh, orphaned or, or, or she's watching or I don't know. They just all live there together. The game doesn't really, dis uh, doesn't really tell you. And she gets a job from a um, resistance movement because there is a, a group, a, a government and military and they're kind of um, ha have oversight of the entire planet Jade lives on and the resistance movement believes that this organization is not particularly good and asks Jade uh, with her camera to sneak around and get into facilities and take pictures of the wrongdoing of these folks. And that's exactly what Jade sets out to do. 
um, and you'll go on this adventure of discovering the truth about those things, discovering an alien conspiracy even. Um, and from a story lens, I thought it was very enjoyable, pretty gripping. Um, and I was really excited to see where the story was going to go. And I think a big part of that was the writing. Um, the characters throughout this game are very interesting and pretty funny. And while the game does have this kind of serious tone overall, it at the same time doesn't remember, um, it always keeps in mind, excuse me, that it is a game and makes it fun and has a couple of enjoyable moments in there. I'm particularly a fan of Double H, who is also a resistance insider who's helping to uncover the truth. And um, he finds himself in a number of shenanigans throughout um, that make it pretty funny whenever he's on screen, so to speak. So from a story lens, uh, pretty fun game and engaging. And I liked it a lot. And then from a gameplay sense, the game has kind of three things going on in it. Three core things. So the first one is exploration. Um, the game is kind of semi-open world. You're on this planet and you can traverse the oceans via a hovercraft um, and you can go into this little port city that Jay lives nearby and of course the various locations that you will um, do your investigative reporting. And um, so you can explore around driving your little hovercraft and collecting pearls which are um, a commodity used to trade in for upgrades and other items that you'll need for your journey. Um, and there, there's not too much to that, right? You'll drive around the hovercraft and you'll, you'll go to these places uh, and you can get out of the hovercraft and walk around cities and areas. Um, and so that's, that's kind of a big part, it's just exploring around. Um, and throughout the game, you'll find passcodes that let you into new places and you can do a little platforming to get around. Um, so nothing too unique outside of what you'd find from any other title during the PlayStation 2 era. Um, and then another big part of the game is combat, which is a smaller sl uh, piece, but it will happen from time to time. And the combat is basically, it's a button press. So you basically just press the same button over and over again. And every once in a while, you're going to switch to uh, a different button to heal yourself if you're in the middle of a battle. But the combat is pretty straightforward. Jade has a, a, a staff, essentially, that she uses to perform combos and moves. Every once in a while, she'll pull off like a special combo and so on. Um, but this is about as complex as the fighting gets. I think from a, a lens of fighting bosses as well, you don't see too many unique mechanics. Usually it comes down to, you know, pull off a combo and you also get like a ranged weapon for shooting material discs. Um, so you might pull off a combo and the enemy might jump away and then maybe you have to shoot them to lure them back to jumping at you and then you just run around away from them. But that's about the core of the combat experience. And then the rest of the game is, of course, sneaking in stealth areas, which there will be entire missions where your job is to sneak around. And I did find the stealth to be pretty, pretty easy. Um, especially by today's standards, a lot of the enemies had very predictable uh, pathing. And as long as you just sat in one spot, kind of got a feel for where they were going to go, it was easy to get by them. And not only that, but if you did make a mistake, the game is very forgiving on checkpoints. And there's a hundred places you could hide to get away. <laughs> in some instances, I thought, well, there's no point in me even stealthing through here because I, I know I won't get hit. And I would just run through a room to get to the other side because I knew... Once I went through a door, a loading screen would happen and I would I would be in a checkpoint. So from a gameplay sense, I'd say the game was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, the, the big kind of thing happening in here is there's some control or camera control issues. There's this really kind of fun mini game where you have to shoot these wood blocks across the table while your opponent's trying to do the same. and whoever gets all the wood blocks on whoever side wins. And Double H is in my team, and this guy is like seven feet tall, and he's wearing a, a thing of armor. And I'm playing the game, and I just see him walk into the into the freaking camera view, and I can't see the table anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, Double H, get out of the way. What are you doing? <laughs> um, and, you know, later on, when he's in your party a lot, 
you'll be running along somewhere and, and he'll be right behind you but the camera the angle and height of it will he'll really block your view a lot of the times and so i found it interesting that i was just wondering did they play test that did they did they consider it i just didn't know but it was something that hindered the experience for me and another thing that happened a lot was i feel like the button layout for running some of the ui stuff could be a little frustrating because your your use button which is circle it basically defaults back to a healing item whenever you trigger a combat sequence or so on um, so that you can quickly press it and then you can quickly heal yourself but the problem is is that all other items also run off of this button it's almost like think of zelda but you only have say one item slot as opposed to three or, or four right um, some of the older Zelda games. And so I often found myself accidentally healing and wasting healing items or doing the same in dialogue. You know, I'm talking to one of my companions and I accidentally am skipping through the dialogue and the last item or the last ask that you always have in any dialogue box with them is, hey, you look like you need some uh, healing items. You know, do you want to heal? And, you know, so every once in a while I would hit that and that'd be kind of frustrating. So... Um, those are kind of the big gameplay hurdles that I had, but overall I found it to be pretty fun. The length of the game is not significant, so it's you know not going to bog you down to uh, run through it, um, and so on. So, from a sound lens, I really love the soundtrack in this game. You have everything from classical piano music to like beautiful synthy songs, and everything sounds so grand and so. Um, you know, when people get excited and they listen to Halo music and they say, you know, oh, it sounds so grand. You know, you have these, um, this men's choir singing and, and oh, I don't know, however you want to describe Halo music. But anyways, the feeling and the heart and the wonderment that that kind of music evokes, you get also when you're playing Beyond Good and Evil. So I thought, I forgot to look up who did the soundtrack here, but they did a fantastic job. I really loved the music in this game, and I thought it's worth just checking out to enjoy some of the tunes that'll play when you're sneaking around or you're exploring the world that Ubisoft's built. And graphically, I thought the game was really great as well. Um, for the time, I was very impressed with how big they can make an open world look. And not only that, but Jade had a really nice character design, and I love the animations of Jade. She really felt fluent and like a real person and of the PlayStation 2 era I think that's a lot harder to find in your in your games um, now the nice thing about the game is it doesn't set out to be realistic it's still has this kind of cartoony tone and feeling and they they really represent that with the imagery as well and I think it was the right idea because they wanted to build this other planet and world and with various characters and so on and I really like what they did there. Um, technically, I think it's still pretty good. However, there are sections where there's a lot going on. If you go to the main city, there's hovercraft and flying cars and people walking around and a fire going on in one of the buildings throughout the course of the entire game. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> um, but, you know, all that said, those areas will chug and chug. I think the game usually runs at 60 frames, but it's easy to see where some performance areas really start to bite at what opportunity this game has to run smoothly. And so I think when you look at the big picture overall, maybe these camera issues, maybe the graphics issues, this game probably, I don't know how deep the play testers went. They could have taken a little bit of time. But the best part is, I don't think these hinder the actual gaming experience. Beyond Good and Evil was a very fun game to play. Uh, and short, it only took maybe eight hours at the max to get through. Um, and I had a lot of fun doing everything from exploring around, collecting all the pearls I could get, to fighting the enemies and sneaking into these facilities and bases. I really felt like I was part of a, a grand mission and journey to explore the world, to research all the creatures, to stop this uh, evil force. The ending ends abruptly and it's kind of weird and I can see why there was an appetite to get a sequel 
and it's really sad to know that that might not happen. I don't know. I mean, the game's been on quiet mode for years now since the um, original reveal at E3. So hopefully we get more of Beyond Good and Evil 2. I would love to play it someday. But until then, if you haven't played this one, I think it's worth a visit and a revisit too, if that's something that you've already done before. But all in all, really enjoy you um, sticking around, listening, and if you like the video, please like the video. Um, would love to have you subscribe to be around for more. And all said, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your day.